Hello, everybody, and welcome. Today, we are talking all about shutter speed. So our aims and objectives today are to develop an awareness of shutter speed and its uses. And our objectives are to locate and use shutter speed function on a camera, identify the use of shutter speeds in different conditions, and understand how shutter speed is measured in time value. Now, again, just as a reminder for how a camera works, is we have our camera body here, and then we have our lens here. We have our light coming through the lens, which would go through the aperture, and then it will bounce off of a mirror, hit another mirror, and then come out the viewfinder. Now, I've shown many of you how this works on a real camera, which essentially is once the light comes in and it bounces off here, once you press the shutter release button up at the top here, what happens is, is the shutter in front of the sensor flies open and then light can then bounce and hit off of the sensor. So the shutter on a camera opens to let light in and then closes. The light that hits the sensor forms the image and then shutter speed measures how long the shutter is open for. So the amount of light that makes an image is called exposure like we talked about last time. Now, if you're ever looking at a camera and you see this little S number here or letter here, it means for shutter priority on your camera. Now, S in the terms of shutter mode on the camera will work out for all settings for you, allowing you to adjust just the shutter speed. So essentially the only thing that your camera says that you're going to be focusing your attention on is how fast it takes the picture. Okay. Now shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. A slow shutter speed may be one fifteenth of a second or slower. And a fast shutter speed is really anything above one 125th of a second. Okay. So if we look at our, our meter here, okay. Notice that we have one sixtieth of a second is right in the middle. Okay. One sixtieth, you cannot go under one sixtieth of a second and hold a camera by hand. Okay. If you are shooting a picture under one sixtieth of a second, you need to be sure that you are using a tripod or your image is going to come out all blurry. Okay. So you want to be sure that, um, you are shooting by hand anything above 160. Okay. Now again, anything below that is a slow shutter speed and anything above that is generally a fast shutter speed. Now shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. So even though you might see a number like 60 on your, on a camera or a, on a light meter, it's essentially saying one sixtieth of a second. So it's actually in terms of a fraction. Okay. So the shutter is open for one sixtieth of a second. Okay. And then for example, over here, when it says one dash 100, that is one one hundredth of a second, which is a relatively faster shutter speed. Fast shutter speeds let less light into the camera sensor. So they're good for bright, sunny conditions. Slower shutter speeds let in more light to the camera sensor, so they're good for dull, low lighting conditions. Now, it's important to know what creative effects you can use by using shutter speed. So if we look at this image here, we notice that the slower shutter speed, the more movement we capture. So in this image here, we have 1 30th of a second. Notice how we have all of this line movement happening here. It's because we are taking an image during the time it takes for the foot to go from here to then here. Now, shutter speeds of 43 seconds for this case, you're going to need a tripod. So you're not going to be able to shoot anything below 1 60th of a second by hand. But if you use a tripod, you'll be able to essentially get moving blur effects with your image. But if you want to shoot below 1 60th of a second to get that blur, you want to be sure that you're using a tripod. Now, a 40 minute exposure, certainly you can't hold your hand or your camera by hand in for 40 minutes to get a good picture. So using a using a tripod is going to help you get that long, super long exposure. So as we can see here, we have the light movement. Now this is how long the shutter speed took the image for. So when it took this picture, this star here started about here and ended about here. Okay. So for that 40 minutes, we are trailing and capturing that star or the sky's movement. Now fast shutter speeds, for example, of 1 25th or 1 125th of a second is going to freeze your action in time. So if we look at this image here of this man jumping into this puddle, 
we see that he is stopped midair right before he touches that puddle, which makes things just a little more exciting and give us a better sense of the action or what's happening. Now again, if we wanted to capture the surfer in freeze frame here, we're gonna need to use a fast shutter speed so we can capture all that water and all that movement in time. So by using a fast shutter speed, we can capture that movement um, in a freezing action so then we don't have to worry about getting any motion blur if we don't want it. Now again, uh, when we think about how to capture fast moving objects in space, we need a very, very fast shutter speed. So in this image here by Egerton, we see that this bullet is flying through this apple at such a fast speed. And the shutter speed that they used to capture this image was actually one ten thousandth of a second. Now, if we were to look at this image, I want you to think to yourself for a moment, which image has a slower shutter speed and which one has a faster shutter speed? If we think about um, slow shutter speeds, do they have a, um, will they provide a blur to the image or would a fast shutter speed, shutter speed capture that moment in freezing action? And what about this image here? Are we using a fast shutter speed or are we using a slow shutter speed to capture that water droplet hitting the water, creating that splash? And then what about this image? We have this one individual standing here and then we have this subway train moving in the background. Do we think that we would need a slow shutter speed or a fast shutter speed? And then in this image here, we see an image at night with this light trail happening from a vehicle. Do you think that this is a slow shutter speed or a fast shutter speed? And then we have this wonderful image here, of this bear shaking water off of itself. Now this is all happening very quickly. Do you think that this is using a fast shutter speed or a slow shutter speed? And then we have this image here of this motorcycle racer. Notice how he's moving really, really fast, but he looks like he's frozen in time. So do you think we're using a slow shutter speed or a fast shutter speed? And then we have this image here of this vehicle moving. Do you think this image was taken with a fast shutter speed or a slow shutter speed? Now to set a camera to S mode on uh, any camera, um, it's really about just moving your dials. So for example, um, moving your main mode button to S and then um, essentially on any camera, you're gonna have a dial that looks something like this. Now when you turn those either to the left or to the right, depending on what brand of camera you have, it will actually speed the camera up faster or slower. So just so you know what that looks like, this is what you'll use to then change the shutter speed and also the aperture.